As a guitar player, I'm sure someone has told you, don't ever try to adjust your truss rod because you can break it. People told me that when I started out. That's the wrong thing to say. You should learn how to adjust your own truss rod. Next move around based on humidity. Wintertime they do one thing, summer the other. Adjusting the truss rod on your own guitar is probably the most important thing you could do to keep that guitar playing well from season to season. Today I'll show you a simple method that I use to adjust the truss rod every time I do it. It's something you can do yourself and it's the safest way to ensure that you won't harm your truss rod or your neck and have to go pay for an expensive repair. I've adjusted thousands of truss rods using this method and I've never broken one and you'll get your neck playing perfectly every time. It looks pretty straight. Here's a Gibson Les Paul in the shop for a truss rod adjustment. How do I know it needs one? The action's too high, that's the complaint. You can really see how much up bow is in it with a straight edge. This is a notched straight edge, specially made for this kind of work. It sits over the frets and reads the fretboard itself. And I'm seeing an awful lot of up bow. Look at the gap there, that's some high action. Enough to make it very uncomfortable to play. Many players, including myself, prefer a guitar neck to be dead straight. The strings will have a nice low action and there's no buzzing on the frets. Some like a little up bow and that's called relief. But too much up bow is not good. That's when your action is too high and it's too tough to play. Or a neck can be in back bow. You never want to have back bow. The action will then be too low and your strings will buzz on the frets towards the center of the fretboard. A truss rod is the mechanism that helps you put your guitar neck in the correct position right where you want it. And that's a very big job to expect a little piece of steel like that to do. And then if you think about, you can have as much as 200 pounds of string pull tension on this neck, pulling it into an up bow. That's asking quite a bit. If you put too much strain on a truss rod, bad things can in fact happen. You could snap it off at the threaded end. I've even seen truss rods pop right out the back of a neck from too much wrenching on it when you don't know what you're doing. So what I do when I'm adjusting a neck is help it adjust so the rod doesn't have to do all the work by itself. Let me show you what I mean. First, let's prep the guitar for an adjustment. You can do this job with the strings on or off. I like to loosen the strings a bit just to take the pressure off. Then with a 5 16 truss rod wrench, that's what Gibson uses, I'll remove and lubricate the nut. That'll make it easier to adjust for this job and for any adjustments you'll need in the future. Some guitars, the nuts are not removable, they're welded onto the rod, but many like a Gibson and vintage fenders, guilds, and harmonies, it comes right off. I like to use Vaseline for a lubricant because it doesn't run all over the place. Get some on the face of it where it bears against the steel washer. Even put a little right on the truss rod threads. Now I'm gonna take it all the way up to where I started when it's just snug. Okay, we're all prepped here. Now I'm ready to do my little uh, magic trick for you. We're gonna build ourselves a little assistant. I've got the neck propped up and I wanna put two blocks of wood at each end of the fretboard. They can be any kind of wood. The idea is you need a spacer. If the strings were off, you could just put a block of wood right on the fretboard. If you leave the strings on like I did, you can easily rig a riser block. These have little notches cut out from the bottom to sit over the D and the G strings. Another simple way would be to cut a little V notch in two blocks of wood so it spans the strings and sits on the frets. Or these are two pieces of wood dial super glued to a block. I like those, they sit right between the strings and nestle in there, and that's what I'll use today. Next, we span those blocks with something long and strong, could be a piece of two by four. This is a carpenter's level that my dad had when I was a kid. Now the idea is I'm gonna clamp this, and that's gonna clamp the neck into a back bow. To do that, I'm taking a clamp, and this is a call, C-A-U-L, that's what we call these, no pun intended. This call is especially made for this purpose and for fret jobs, clamping fingerboards on. It's curved and padded to go on the back of the neck, and then this one slides over this clamp. If you don't have a block like this, this is a piece of foam, it's a sanding block, that would work, no doubt about it. You could take a block of wood and put some rubber or cloth on it. You just don't want to crush the back of the neck with the clamp. But I have the tool, so I'm going to use it. And I'm going to come right in the middle of the neck, about the seventh to the ninth fret, tightening up real good. 
Clamping this neck into a back bow first takes a lot of strain off the truss rod to straighten the neck. I'll stop there and look at it. I can see it back bowing real nicely. I'll give it a little bit more. There we go. You see this? It's going back. I'm bending the neck, the peg head's going downward. That's as far as I'll go. Now with the back bow established, what we call pre-adjusted, when I tighten the truss rod nut, it's gonna help hold it in this position. When you tighten the truss rod nut, you don't make a bunch of turns. A whole turn would be a lot on a truss rod nut. I'm gonna put a little mark of ink right here. I can watch that and I'll know how far I'm going. Here goes. There's a quarter turn. That's not even a half turn yet. There's a half a turn. I'm gonna go probably three quarters. I'm gonna put a little bit more on this. Almost a whole turn. Now I'll take the clamp back off and see how we did. It's definitely come straight. It's actually in a slight backbone now. It's even rocking, see that? I have to string it to pitch now and see if the string tension pulls the neck straight. When I string it to pitch, if it's perfectly flat and straight, I'm happy. If it happens to be in a little bit of back bow, that's great, because all I need to do is loosen the rod a little bit and let the neck pull straight. Now I'm basically at pitch, and I do have a slight back bow. Still rocking. I'm going to loosen this a little bit because I want to let the strings and the truss rod let the neck pull up. Lefty loosey. Ah, right there. And now that neck is straight. Anytime you adjust the truss rod, you're probably going to have to adjust the bridge up or down. They go hand in hand. In this case, I need to raise the bridge. The action's so low that it's buzzing a bit on these lower frets. A little bit buzzy. To do that, I'll just turn these thumbnails lefty-loosey to bring it up a bit. Now, let's see what the action is at the 12th fret. I'm using the string action gauge. It has marks along the bottom that tell you how big the gap is between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret. Action is the way you adjust your guitar until it feels good for you and plays the way you want it. Once you get that, then you can measure that with an action gauge and set all your guitars up that way. Then you know what kind of action you like. On this guitar, I'm reading 70 thousandths underneath the low E string to the top of the fret. That's low, but I, I like it if it's not going to buzz too bad. And I'll call it 50 thousandths under the treble E. That's a fairly low action, and it feels good to me. This whole guitar is vibrating. You can feel it in the neck because the truss rod's tight and the neck is straight and it's driving the energy down to the body and the bridge. I wouldn't really know if I like it until I ran it through an amp. It's playing great. I'm happy with that and look how easy it was. That's something you can really do yourself and it makes all the difference in the world. By the way, if you don't have a bar and a clamp and a call, have a friend hold the guitar body firmly on a table with the neck hanging off the edge, then you can pull back on the neck as you adjust the truss rod, as easy as that. I call it the buddy system. Thanks, buddy. Now let's adjust the neck on an acoustic guitar. Here we have a recording king, which is different from the Gibson because it adjusts through the sound hole. Your guitar will either adjust through the sound hole or down at the peg head end. You just need to find out what tool you need to adjust it with. Earlier when we adjusted the Gibson Les Paul, we use the socket wrench. These come in 5 sixteenths, 9 30 seconds, quarter inch for different types of guitars. Then you have the Allen wrenches, 5 millimeter, 4 millimeter, 1 8 different reaches. For some vintage fenders, you can use this neat little bent angle double ended wrench that can reach the nut at the body end and make your adjustment without needing to remove the neck. For this guitar, it's a 4 millimeter Allen wrench right here through the sound hole right in that socket. Another difference between the Gibson and this Recording King is the type of truss rod that's in it. The Gibson had a single action truss rod. With a single action rod, when you tighten your adjusting nut, righty-tighty, it will straighten out the neck. 
and even pull your neck into back bow against the pull of the strings. When you loosen it, because of the string tension, it goes either straight or back into an up bow. Now here is a double action rod, like the kind we have in this recording king. If you turn it to the right, righty tighty, it's going to pull the neck back away from the string pull, just like the single action rod. But when you loosen it, turning it to the left, it forces the neck in the other direction. So you can actually force a back bowed neck into a straight neck or into an up bow. It's a two-way rod. One's pulling, one's pushing. So if your guitar has a double action truss rod, you never have to worry about having a straight neck. I don't care if it's a single action or double action rod, I still always help it adjust. In this case, this guitar sat unplayed for quite a while and the strings were loose and the truss rod was loose and the neck back bowed. That means it warped. And that happens when guitars aren't attended to or played and the truss rod is loose. In terms of having to play on a guitar with back bow, you'd be fine on the higher notes. But once you get past the middle, where there's a big back bow, it's gonna buzz like crazy. Impossible to play that. But it's a two-way rod. We'll force it straight, but still give the truss rod a little help along the way. Once again, we'll loosen the strings a bit. Now, instead of just going ahead and cranking this two-way rod to the left to do all the work on its own, I'm going to help it by propping up the peg head on a foam block and pushing down on the guitar at the shoulders, relieving a bit of the pressure as I make that adjustment. See my hand shaking? I'm pressing down, you see that? The peg head's propped up so I have a long expanse of the neck to flex, and that's gonna help me do the job. Now I'll turn it to the left. Mm, I'd say I've gone about a half a turn. Now I'm going to pause and check it at pitch with the dock straight edge. If it hasn't worked on the first attempt, I'd go back and do it again. It's almost dead straight. It's got the smallest bit of relief in it, which I know this particular customer likes, so I'll keep it there. That's what I want to see, a nice straight neck, a good low action, and no buzzing. The next time you adjust your neck, try this method and it might keep you out of trouble.